Hello everyone. Welcome to our third class on differential calculus where today we shall look on at how we differentiate natural exponential. So in our previous class, our first class we looked at rules, rules of differentiation and in our class, second class we looked at how do we differentiate using first principle. Now today we are looking at how do we differentiate natural exponential. Here is very simple. We are assuming, in this case, we are differentiating a constant and then exponential, natural exponential to power rx. So, how do we differentiate this one? Remember, our c is a constant. So, we said we treat that one the way it is. So, when we differentiate exponential, what happens? It remains the way it is. then you only differentiate the power. What do I mean? If you have exponential to power rx, so what you do, it remains the way it is, but now you differentiate the power. So what happens is that you have the exponential the way it is, but you have to differentiate power where you get r. So in that case, you have cr exponential to power rx. Maybe we can take example on the same. So you are given y is exponential to power x. How do you differentiate that one? Remember, our dy over dx will be equals to, it remains the way it is, our exponential will remain the way it is, power x, exponential x. Then we multiply by the derivative of the power. We must differentiate the power. We must differentiate our exponential is exponential x. So you must differentiate this x, and if you differentiate x, based on our first class of calculus, it will be equals to one, this is one. So you have exponential to power x times one, so automatically you get exponential to power x. Maybe we can take example two. You have y is equals to exponential to power two x. I'm my exponential two x. So in this case, how do we differentiate this one? Again, dy over dx, it will remain the way it is. Our exponential will remain the way it is. Exponential to power 2x. I'm my exponential 2x. Times, now, you have to differentiate the power. You have to differentiate the power. And our power in this case is 2x. Exponential 2x. So you must differentiate 2x. And when you differentiate 2x, we say you get 2. So you have 2 exponential 2x. Because when you differentiate this one, you get 2. Because we said if you have to differentiate 3x, you get 3. 4x, you get 4. So in that case, when you differentiate about 2x, we will get exponential to power 2x times 2. That's why I have written my 2. Example 3. Assume you have y. Let me use this time. Function of x is exponential to power x, exponential x squared. So how do we get the first derivative? So in this case, we said our exponential will remain the way it is, exponential x squared, but we must differentiate the power. We must differentiate the power, x squared. And when you differentiate x squared, you will get what? We will get 2x. Because we said you bring these two there, then it will be x to the power 1. So you have 2x. So in that case, my first derivative will be equal to 2x exponential x squared. That's how we differentiate an exponential. It remains the way it is, but you multiply with the derivative of this power. Let me use this power because it's exponential x squared. You differentiate now your x squared and you multiply with the original equation. So that's how I have differentiated my x squared. I got 2x. Then I multiply with the original equation. So I got that the derivative of exponential to power x squared will be 2x exponential x squared. So now, maybe example four. Example four is let's assume we have a function of x is exponential, 3 exponential, 4x squared plus 2x. 4x squared plus 2x. How do we differentiate this one? Our first derivative of x, we said this one is just a constant. 
So 3 exponential 4x squared plus 2x, we said it will remain the way it is, but now you differentiate the power. We have to differentiate the power, and this case is 4x squared plus 2x. How do we di differentiate this one? We said it will remain the way it is, but we have to differentiate the power. So in that case, it will be 3 4x squared plus 2x. But when we differentiate 4x squared based on our first class on calculus, we said this will be 8x. Because you said this two comes here, so it will be 8. Then x to power, you must raise 1. So it will be 8x plus, when you differentiate 2x, we agreed that when you differentiate 2x, you get 2. 3x, you get 3. So we will get 2. And that's how we differentiate an exponential. So maybe you may simplify further on the same. But I think it is clear when you are differentiating an exponential, it remains the way it is exponential, then you differentiate the power. Exponential 2x, you differentiate that 2x. Exponential 4x squared plus 2x, you differentiate that, then you multiply with the original equation. And that's how we differentiate uh, our natural exponential. Maybe we can do another example, example 5 on the same. Our example 5, you may get you have y is equals to x to the power 4, exponential 2x. I want to solve this one where you have a product of two function and my one function and the other one is g of x. As you can see, here we have a polynomial. Here we have exponential function. So I want to, to solve a situation where you may find you have a combination of what we have already covered. We have already covered in our first lesson how we differentiate a polynomial. Now we have look at how we differentiate an exponential. So in this case, at the same time, we are using the rules that we studied in our first class, where we are differentiating, now this is a product of two functions. And we said if you are to differentiate this one, you first of all, hold f constant, differentiate this one. Then plus, you hold this one constant, you differentiate the other function. We agreed, you hold this one constant, you differentiate this one. Plus, you hold this one constant, you differentiate this one. So in this case, we have our function y is equal to x to the power 4 exponential 2x. So if I want to get my first derivative, so I hold this one constant, then I differentiate exponential 2x. Plus, now I hold this one constant to be exponential 2x, I differentiate x to the power 4. So here, I have only shown how we use the product rule. Hold this one's constant, differentiate this one. Hold this one constant, differentiate this one. Then you join them together using the addition sign. So here you get x to the power 4. How do we differentiate exponential to the power 2x? We said it will remain the way it is, but now you differentiate the power, our 2x. So it will remain the way it is, but I differentiate the power. So plus exponential to power 2x. Then we know how we, we, we did more examples on our first class on how we differentiate x to power 4. Bring this 4 there, then it will be x to power 3. Bring 4 there, then our power we raise 1, so it will be 3. So in that case, I'll get x to power 4 exponential 2x times 2 plus exponential 2x times 4x to the power 3. So you may simplify that one and say it's 2x to the power 4 exponential 2x plus 4x cubed exponential 2x. You may simplify further where this is common and you can be able to factor out. So in this case, I have shown how we use the product rule when you have an exponential function. It's just the same. Hold this one constant, differentiate this one. Hold this one constant, differentiate the other one. But the key issue is how do we differentiate now exponential to the power x, which we had looked at this one as our example too. So we got 2 exponential 2x. So in that case, that's the same case. So we will do the last example where we shall look at where we are dealing with now the quotient rule. Our last example for today is example 6, where we have said now you look at a situation where you have an exponential and a polynomial. So you have a polynomial function and the exponential function, but we are dealing at reminding ourselves how we 
we solve this one using quotient, quotient rule. So in this case, we said if you are given y, it's a function of f of x over g of x. We said here, we must differentiate first of all f of x. So we hold g of x constant, then we differentiate our numerator minus, now hold the numerator constant, we differentiate the denominator all over denominator squared. So all over denominator, denominator squared. So in this case, our function y is equals to exponential x over x squared. So we are using the quotient rule. So dy over dx will be equals, first of all, hold denominator constant. Differentiate this one. Then you minus, you hold the numerator constant, then you differentiate the denominator, which is x squared, all over x squared, now you square the denominator. So in this case, you get x squared. How do you differentiate exponential to power x? If you are to differentiate exponential to power x, it will remain the way it is. Then you differentiate x. We said if you are to differentiate exponential to power x, what you do, it remains the way it is, then you differentiate the power, that x. And automatically we will get this one is one. So minus exponential to power x, how do you differentiate x squared? We will get 2x. Because you bring this 2 there before our x, so it will be 2x. Because this was x squared, it will be now you less 1 to our power, it will be 2x. All over x to power 4. So in this case, you have x squared exponential x minus 2x exponential x all over x to power 4. So in this case, it's just a, on how we use the quotient rule which we did all these rules, and we did more examples on the same in our first class on calculus where we look at the rules of differentiation and my introduction to calculus. So with this one now, that's how we differentiate exponential. We look at more ways on how we differentiate exponential when we'll be doing more examples when we proceed. But at least now you have the basic knowledge on how we differentiate exponential function, natural exponential function. We shall look at logarithmic function later, but let's watch the next video where we shall look at how we differentiate a trigonometry. But before we look at trigonometry, we shall look at introduction to limits on the same, on our calculus class, introduction to limits, so that we can be able to proceed on how we differentiate a trigonometry function. So thank you for watching.